Today on your Geek Fix, we're gonna be showing you the fastest, easiest, and cheapest way to add grass to your miniatures without need for tools like this. We'll be using that skill and some others to be able to make this Fallout diorama. Stay tuned, this is your Geek Fix. So last month we had Fallout lead artist Nate Perkipile on our show. And one of you asked him if he could have any prop, what would it be? That's tough. Probably one of the guns from Fallout. Now normally I make something to give to our guests that means something to them. But I was wrapped up in the third Pip-Boy video and was feeling overwhelmed and decided to just buy one instead. So I got this AER laser rifle, which is fine, but I wanted to make it special. I decided to put it in a display case that would fit pretty well, but I wanted to make it look a little bit more in-world and I thought of this scene from the trailer for 76 and they could be really cool to have some power armor that's semi-buried. So first I painted the base on the bottom with some of this hammered antique platinum and some chestnut. This will make the base stand out a little bit more and give it a nice color for our ground. Now I knew that I wanted some miniature grass uh, and that typically takes a process called flocking, uh, which means that not only do I have to carefully check my subtitles to this video, but also I would need a tool like this. This is a budget flocking machine or, or static grass applicator. And actually for the price, it's a pretty good deal. The biggest difference that I hear about the more expensive static grass applicators is a lot to do with their screens. They usually come with only one screen and if they're too tight, they don't allow enough longer grass through and the ones that are too big let too much of the smaller grass through. And so for $40, this is a pretty good deal because it came with actually two screens uh, for my different lengths of grass. It also came with a free bag of grass. Now the way that they work is kind of the same way as using static to make your hair stand on end. They create this static charge that makes those small pieces of grass stand up when they hit the glue. Once it dries a little, you can spray some more glue and add more and more grass of different lengths to make it look fuller and more natural looking. Now eventually I do plan to show how to uh, make one of these yourself, but for right now, if you were to buy this and, and also buy some grass of different lengths, so that's gonna add up, it gets expensive. Not to mention the fact that it takes a while. So I was pretty excited to find this. This is the Spring Shop Foam Moss Table Runner, which is supposed to be about $40, but every time I've seen them, they've been about half off. And when you consider that this comes with 16 by 34 inches, that would take me a long time and a lot of money to be able to make anything even close to this. It also has this batting on the bottom, which could be useful for certain types of projects, but uh, can be removed pretty easily. I also bought some preserved moss from the dollar store and some small rock and dirt by Woodland Scenics. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some all-purpose glue and apply that evenly to our base. I took my cut piece of grass and stuck it straight on, pressing it down so the glue seeps through and then added some of my dirt and shook off whatever didn't stick to the glue. Then I trimmed off the excess grass and presto, in less than a minute, we have full and realistic turf. Now I'm ready for my power armor. I downloaded some models of the power armor and cut them in Tinkercad to, uh, to make them look like they're sunken. And then we 3D printed them. In case you haven't noticed, I love hammer paints. They really make a great texture. So first I used a healthy level of that antique platinum for my base layer, and then followed that with a little chestnut for my basic weathering on top. Once it was dry, I could weather it a little bit more by sanding it. I also added some detail to the helmet with a Gundam marker and some paint. I also used some clear acrylic on the lenses and some windows to make it look a little bit more shiny and realistic. Now just to lay it out. I cut into the grass to help sink the pieces and to stick them to the base. And then I also added some more dirt. It looks a little bit more like the trailer now, but, but it still lacks something. You gotta figure if the power armor's there, the loot would also be nearby. I also thought it'd be funny to have the controversial canvas bag to hold it. So I bought a 1-6 scale G.I. Joe duffel bag and ironed on the decals that I made with my vinyl cutter. But the bag was a little too big, so I used some glue to fold it in and give it some more form. 
When we made the armor, we also printed a small Vault Boy bobblehead. And after I sprayed it with my hammered antique platinum and chestnut, I was ready to paint on the details. I also wanted some bottles. I bought these 1-6 scale bottles and printed labels for the four flavors on some silver foil printer paper. Try saying that three times fast. Then I removed the existing labels from the bottles and replaced them with my new Coca-Cola labels. I also sanded the bottles to make them look a little bit more like aged glass. Of course, we also needed some magazines. I printed several covers from the game on paper and cut them out. And then cut out pieces of brown packing paper and folded and glued them together into these magazines. Next, I cut the magazines and some of the bottles to fit them into the bag and glued them in place. I also had another bottle of magazine that I could put into other areas of the diorama. So once when we saw that they all fit, all we had to do was glue them in. And it looks great! But something's still missing. Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important loot items. Bottle caps. I printed some caps on silver aluminum paper and then I cut them out pressed them onto the bottles to give them form, and then added them to my scene. Whoops, I almost forgot about putting in the gun. Hi, I'm Jeremy. This is your Geek Fix, and, and we wanted to thank all of our subscribers for making videos like this a possibility. You know, one of the most common comments that we get from viewers is that they're surprised we don't have more subscribers. I know, right? Even with over a million views, only a tiny portion of those are people who subscribe and get the full benefit of our channel. Which is unfortunate, because when you subscribe to your Geek Fix, you're becoming a member of a community of makers, collectors, and consumers like you. From our videos to weekly podcasts, we'll cover everything from anime to movies, games, and prop collecting with the people who create and love it. We also love connecting with our viewers. That's why we try to respond to every comment and encourage you to share your stories and creations. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button to join our community of geeks and the stuff they love. Also ring that reminder bell to know when new content comes out. And most of all, welcome to your Geek Fix. If you like this video, make sure that you hit that like button. Also join our community by subscribing to the channel. And then click that reminder bell so you know when our next video is coming out. In case you didn't know, we have a community page and podcast where we'd like to feature you. So please send your stories and pictures of your creations to yourgeekfix at gmail.com. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, like, subscribe, comment below. This was your Geek Fix. <laughs>